You'll probably hear a ghost story or two this Halloween, but did you know there's a true creepy story about one of Denver's most famous parks? These days, Cheeseman Park is a popular spot for joggers, dog walkers, and others who just want to enjoy the beautiful green space. But the park's history is a lot more sinister. Robert Eman, a docent with Historic Denver, took us on a tour of Cheeseman Park's haunted history. What was here before it was Cheeseman Park? Well, it started as a cemetery. In 1858, gold was found in Cherry Creek near the confluence with the Platte River. And a mad rush of people came to find gold and to find their fortune. But another man by the name of William Larimer Jr. brought his 10 or so people out and they formed Denver City. He came out here about three miles west of what, what we now call Larimer Street under this high ridge and founded Pros Mount Prospect Cemetery. He didn't own the land, he didn't buy the land from anyone, but he just started a cemetery to make it a respectable city. And Mount Prospect continued to bury the citizens of Denver who died and also the passers through that came in the gold rush days and beyond. So back when Denver turned this into Mount Prospect, it started subdividing into various areas. Uh, the, the Catholic Cemetery is where we now have Denver Botanic Gardens. It was known as Mount Calvary. Uh, due east of that was the Jewish uh, burying and prayer grounds. The Hebrew Cemetery was due east. On the north end of Mount Prospect was the cemetery for the Grand Army of the Republic. If you were a Union soldier that had fought and survived the Civil War and came to Denver, you were buried up there. The, the Masons had an area, very southwest corner was the Poppers Cemetery. If you were passing through Denver and died or didn't have money, you were buried in those areas. As time moved on, other cemeteries opened in the area and this high ground did not have any natural irrigation or way to bring water to it, or, or they certainly didn't bother to do that. So the cemetery itself looked shabby. It looked like the cemetery itself was kind of dying as well. The city of Denver started to get closer and closer with its residential area to this shabby cemetery, moving from what is now our state capital uh, up to this area. So the people of Denver decided they had a new idea. Let's turn this into a park. You had a problem. There are thousands of people buried here. How do you change a cemetery into a park? Well, one thing they did is they sent out a directive to the people of Denver and said, you have 90 days, come and take your loved ones, your, your family that are buried here, exhume them and remove them to a different cemetery. People did, it was expensive I'm sure, but not everyone could do that. And besides, not everyone buried here had anyone in Denver that would even perhaps even know that they were buried here. And the second problem was, where are they buried? So Denver decided to hire Edward P. McGovern. And they said in a contract with him, if you will exhume the dead and take the corpses alone and put them in boxes and then rebury those boxes in existing cemeteries other than this one, we'll pay you $1.90 per box. Well, the city of Denver didn't know that they had just made a deal with the devil. A very unscrupulous and fairly despicable Mr. McGovern started taking the bodies and could make more if he dismembered the human corpses. And he cut them in half, he made $3.80. If he cut them in quarters, he made $7.60. And it took less than a year for a local Denver paper to print the story on the front page of the paper. The people of Denver were horrified to find out that Mount Prospect was exhuming bodies but dismembering them. So he was fired and he just left. And he left open graves and exhumed bodies showing. They put a split, split rail fence around what was left of Mount Prospect and nothing really happened. So by about that 1890 period, Denver just started turning this into a park on top of what was still an old cemetery. Were all the bodies exhumed? Absolutely not. Low estimates range from 400 to 800 corpses are still here today. 
Higher estimates range from 2,000 to 4,000 people are buried somewhere in what we now call our lovely Cheeseman Park. Are there still bodies here? Yes. And when Denver Botanic Gardens was started uh, construction in the 1950s and 60s, bodies were found, construction was stopped so they could be uh, addressed appropriately. As recent as 2010, there have been bodies found when there's irrigation or construction going on. At Historic Denver, we deal with facts. But when you have a city park that started as a cemetery and dismembered many of the corpses and then turned into a park, there's urban legends and local lore that develop. Are there ghosts here? Well, we can't prove that factually at Historic Denver, but there are tales of cold spots in Cheeseman Park or suddenly having a dog act absolutely erratically. Do we know for sure that that's anything to do with it? No, but it sure makes for one heck of a good ghost story.